Rhino's going to do a quick little setup with Enscape. Um, I've started Enscape, so I hit the little play button. I have one 3D exterior view open, and I'm kind of setting this guy up. Um, and so getting into a view that I want to look at, so maybe I come and twist around a little bit. I don't know. Um, but once you get into a view that you're satisfied with, um, you could come to this little view management with this, this little guy. You can also, I've got the safe frame turned on, which shows me what it's going to render. And that's based on the visual settings here. If I go to output, you can see I'm doing an 800 by 1080, just because I don't need the full bleed because it's kind of a square thing. Um, and then I also have it set to two point perspective. So it kind of straightens up the lines. And so if I go to this little view management thing, I can actually create a view and I'll just give it a name, Enscape, um, you know, test. And once I do that, I can tell it to save the Enscape sun position so it will ignore Revit, um, but I'll just remove that. And basically all it's doing is, change, is saving an XYZ position in space. And so if I hit create, you'll see that guy actually appears over here, that Enscape test, right? And so once I have that saved, so if I change it, I can always go back to it. I can go into my visual settings here. And if I pull that over, if I wanted to do a white version, I can go to white and it will change it to white. I can also work on the outlines. So if I wanted thicker outlines for it to show up, right? There's the two point perspective. It's auto exposing. So I can change my exposure here manually if I wanted to do that or go back to auto exposure. Um, and I just reset this. If, if you mess something up and it looks wonky, you can come back to this wherever the percentage is and hit that and it'll set it back to default. Um, and then the rendering quality set it high. You can sort of mess with the highlights, you know, make it brighter, turn the shadows down, make them lighter. With the white, there's not much saturation, but a little bit. So you can pull the saturation and change the color temperature. So you can play around with a lot of these. I would just get rid of the motion blur and all of these guys. Um, the atmosphere, you can have fog, but you don't really need any of this for the simple stuff we're doing. Um, right now, the background is set to white cubes, but you can't see them. I'm just looking at the ground. Um, I would set it to a white background and just leave it there, get rid of all the clouds. Um, and then your output, this is the resolution it's going to render to, um, and this is the video that it's going to take. So um, again, if I go back to main and I set it to none, it's going to show me the materials. And then if I set it to white, it's going to show me no materials, just white. And this is kind of like a styrofoam, the polystyrol. And then the light view is actually showing you how much light is falling. It's kind of cool. You know, but um, if I go back to none right now, you can come in and up at the top here, you can screenshot this and it's going to use all those settings and it's going to save, you know, if I go to the desktop and I'll just put this into a render test um, and click save, it will save that rendering out right to the desktop. So it's exporting that image. And if I go to file folder and go to my desktop, and go to render test, there's that image, right? It put that guy out there, all right? If you wanna do um, a video, um, so right now, a couple of things. I don't have any shadows because I don't have a floor, so I would have to put a floor in to get shadows here. Um, and so if I go over to Revit and I go to my plan A1, I can sort of zoom out and go to architecture and floor. And if I go to floor, it's going to give me a generic white filled floor. And if I go to my draw panel and I do a circle, I can just click on that circle and I'll just type like three, one, two, three. Whoops. Let's go to circle, right? And I want to click on a point and then draw out and I'll just type in 3000 feet, right? And as soon as I hit check, um, it'll put that floor plane in. So now I'm getting that. And maybe I wanna just put it down negative one foot so I can see the floor that's actually at the base of that. So 
Now I'm getting sort of a ground plane in there. So you could do that as well. Maybe I need to zoom out so I can see my little shadow now. Um, to change the sun settings, you can either change them in the view that you're in in Revit. So you can change it there. Or if you're in um, Inkscape, you can hold down your shift key and move your right mouse button and it'll, it'll cascade through the day. So you can sort of adjust it that way. You can see it down at the bottom, right? Um, if you want to change where the sun is coming from, it, you actually have to come in to the view here and um, you can either go to your sun settings. So if I come in here and go to my sun settings, that's going to give me this guy, right? Um, but the way that you actually change where north is, is actually based on another thing. And if you need to do that, let me know um, and I'll show you how to do that. But that's it for the stills. So 